Cool. All right, guys. So it looks like we are live here, and we're gonna wait till a couple more people pop in. Uh, but all we're doing today, everyone, is just showing you guys some product research, right? Just show you how quickly you can find a product. Um, you know, sometimes it takes longer. Sometimes it's it's really quick, right? But the important thing is is that the work behind it is pretty simple. So as long as you know you come in with the idea of knowing you may be sitting down for a couple hours. Uh, you should be good as long as you're willing to wait. Mm -hmm. And the products are there, the gold is there, you just got to dig for it. So yeah. um, kind of before we go into that, Andres, can you kind of tell them a little bit about, uh, you know, what product research is really? Like what is what is exactly that, that we're doing on, on Amazon exactly? Yeah, so well, for this particular method, what we're doing is we're going to go to a supplier, right? The, the place where we're actually going to source the item from yeah. to actually fulfill for these orders for these customers that are buying these products from Amazon. And we're just going to pretty much go through a bunch of items and see um, if that exact same item is on Amazon, which for most of the time they are. What we want to actually look like, or look for is not just that they actually have the product, but that it's actually profitable, right? That there's a difference in the prices enough so that after the Amazon fees, after any potential taxes that you may have to pay, yeah. you can still make a decent profit off an item. So we're going to, yeah, like Chris was saying, we're going to show you guys the whole process. It, it is something that could take long. It's the reality. Yeah, you so, guys are yeah. going to see the entire yeah, process. So, so the way it'll work, everyone, is you're going to have a chat there, and it's going to kind of be like an open Discord. So we're going to go through some of the products. We're going to go through it. I'm going to answer some questions as I see in the chat. Feel free to ask anything Amazon drop shipping related. I'll do my best to make sure that I can answer that for you. Uh, Andres is going to go through some products, but uh, just go ahead and everybody just let us know where you're tuning in from um, so we can kind of just get an idea of, of where everybody is. Uh, yeah, see, how many people do we have? Uh, let's see. I, I, can't, I can't see oh, from I can't there. See from so. there. Um, okay, so we have that open. We're good. All right, Texas. San Antonio? Okay, cool. San Antonio. It's the only time I've been there is when I moved with my brother, bro. <laughs> Look at this. We went on cross country. What did you say? <laughs> Looking for daddy, probably giving out price to whoever finds him. David Gonzalez said, you know who that is? looking for Daddy Pablo, giving a prize to whoever finds him. All right, well, What's up, dude? Pablo is right there. I'm right so, here. Uh, yeah, Detroit, Canada. Oh, hey, Australia. Is Orlando, Florida. That's my hometown. Texas, Las Vegas, yeah, Costa Mesa. Damn. Yeah, people from all over the place. There's people from everywhere here. New York, another Canada. Cool. Wow. Awesome, guys. All right, cool. So, uh, the chat is going to be open for everybody. Feel free to throw the questions in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and answer some of the questions, but let's go into product research, man. So we're, what we're going to do is, is Andres will just show you uh, one of the methods that we found that works uh, when you're looking for products. Yeah. So like I said, guys, be patient. It's going to be an open Discord, so I'm going to be going through some topics. He's going to be showing you some stuff. We may interchange dialogue back and forth. So um, let's go ahead and, and have at it, man. Uh, how, do we, uh, how do we find some of these products first? What yeah, are we gonna definitely. Be looking at? So we're going to show you guys just... Um, a really, really simple method, to be honest. This doesn't take a lot of, uh, you know, like strategy. Yeah, there really is It's isn't. very, very straightforward. It's just like we were saying. It's just, you, you kind of just have to put in the work in and, you know, you'll, be, you'll start finding items. So what we first want to do is um, we're going to pretty much search a random item. And what I got, want you guys to do is to kind of like just write in the chat, like some random items that we can find just to see. Um, yeah, somebody give some us a, ideas. a random item. And uh, this call will be like 45 minutes to an hour at yeah, most guys. Either. It's it's This is not a class. It's not a course. All right. Um, so whatever value that you can get from this and, and start it and make 500 bucks in a month. Cool. You know, hopefully that hopefully that's what you're able to get. Uh, Iowa City. Watches. Uh, Brian, uh, watches aren't, aren't our, an item that we really want to sell. For the most part, we try to stay away from like any type of like jewelry or anything that has sizes. Because one thing is, um, even though returns are common, you don't really want to have to like you know, be selling something like shoes, yeah. something that like people can't actually try on until they get it. Because most of the time, that's just how it is. You know, sizes run different and stuff like that. And watches, it could be a liability too. Yes, yeah, so you basically... Okay, so we have a bunch of stuff here. You, you got, you're got you giving somebody an easier reason to return the item. Yeah, it's just right. some extra work, you know, just for yeah, no reason. Yeah, so clothes, anything like that where you sell it and someone's going to be, oh, this this didn't fit me right. So now yeah. you got to deal with that. Okay, uh, okay so, so cool. Let's pick an item here. Um, let me see. Um, we have lawnmower, sofa, blankets... Um, all these are good. Which one do you think we should do? Uh, I don't know, dude. Do the, uh, some, the dog bed. Yeah, we could do the dog bed. All right, okay. so how many of you guys are currently drop shipping on Amazon or eBay in here? Let's 
hope. Yeah, all of those things that you guys are writing, like for the most part, they're fine. I mean, a soap. I don't think that's something I would. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've sold a packet of yeah. soap before. Yeah. I guess you can. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I just said we could make money tonight. Uh, Fortnite weekly tournaments. Uh, I don't know if if well, how <laughs> the legit uh, legitimacy of that one is, but yeah, if you use the strategies, you, you can. You can. I mean, you just have to like you know. How is your that account. possible? Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and just show them that process, man. Uh, let's see if we can use these dog beds and, and find something out of here. Yeah, so let's do a couple of examples really quick. Basically, what we want to do is, um, obviously, we find an item. We already put dog bed. And all of these items are going to show up, right? And at this point, you can really filter this if you want to. I don't really, oh, I don't really do it, but you can if you want to. Sometimes if you're looking for a specific price, a lot of the times, um, you have to, like, watch your capital, right? So... If you're, you don't really have a whole lot of capital, maybe you don't want to be sourcing like $500 items from the go. So we, we might as well just put a limit here just to not like kind of like avoid all these super expensive items. Even yeah. though I don't think dog beds get that expensive. You probably There's don't want to do more than like... ones in there. Yeah, I bet. So, so what we'll do everybody is we'll, is we'll wait for us to go through like the basic strategy method first. That mm -hmm. way uh, Andres can go ahead and search for whatever product he's going to find. And then I can go through the questions as like a regular discussion. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and then we'll just uh, talk yeah, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So all you really want to do is I'm just really going to open up a bunch of these, right? Just have a, a bunch of different tabs open. Um, it doesn't really have to be in order. I kind of just pick and choose like just random ones. I don't really like to pick ones where it has like different variations just because the, the search process gets a little bit more complicated. So just for to make it easier, I'm going to pick the ones that only have one. So we're just opening different tabs right now. So we don't have to click on one item and yeah. open up a page a million times. Exactly. It's just um, kind of like knock them out all at the same time. So I think at this point we have enough to just kind of like show you guys the example. So all we really want to do is just like we told you guys from the beginning, we want to see if this item is on Amazon. So what we like to do is um, I want to get the title here, right? I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to right click it and then search it on Google. And then obviously, you know, this is going to come out. You're gonna, you have to look for Amazon, right? So I see uh, there's already one here on Amazon. We're going to see if it's the actual item. So let me see, is this, this is not the same item. A lot of times they won't always be completely accurate just because since we're copying the title, it's um, sometimes they could be like very generic and like, you know, cozy, cuddler, dog, and cat, pet bed. It, it can be like, it can mean a lot of different beds. They could have like the same title. So for this one, since I didn't really find it immediately, the other thing I could do is I can kind of go to the, the you know, the actual picture, right click it and then search Google for image. And a lot of times I can, you know, maybe it'll show up this time. Let me see. I don't really see anything on Amazon. If if it takes too long already, it's like it's not even worth it. I'm just gonna You're move just on to the next one. You're just a couple seconds on each on each item to see if you can find it. Yeah, it's just you don't want to spend too much time at the end of the day. So I'm just gonna move on to the next one. I'm gonna copy so, the title. So you're just searching on Google and seeing if you're finding that item to seeing if it's selling on Amazon currently. Yeah. Okay. So this is a, honestly this is a very hard category. I'm already noticing. Let me see. Yeah, this is, I don't like this one. I mean, I, I don't really like doing variations just for this reason, just because you might search for it and it just might not end up being the same item, same color. Let me see. Let me see if I open some of these. Let me see. This is like not even the same item, is it? Uh, I don't think so. Hold on. No, that might of, be the same item. Uh, it's, it, it's the same one. It's just a different color. It's got the tag on there. Yeah, so you have you, to just pay attention to these small details, guys, because you don't want to be picking an item that you're going to end up listing, and it's not what you're saying it is. Right? Yeah. If you end up shipping a, a different item out to your customer than what they actually bought, uh, you're going to have a lot of issues on Amazon. Yeah. And I already kind of noticed, like, this is going to be a very hard item, just because, um, a very hard, yeah, like, dog beds aren't very easy yeah. just because they're so, very, yeah, very generic. Yeah, so that's a good point, man. So I think that a lot of people, like, they get stuck in the beginning with, like, okay, so what item do I search? How do I look for the first thing? Yeah. So the important thing to realize is we're not necessarily looking, you may end up finding an item that takes you to another item that ends up being the item you actually sell. Yeah. Right? So you may just have a, procl a proclivity for items that you see them and you randomly type them in because you think they're easy to think of. Yeah. Right? But sometimes it's hard to actually find an item in that category that's for sale. So, and you're gonna get a lot of these. You're gonna get a lot of them where they're going to, you're gonna search for an item and it's gonna pop up and you're not gonna get any results for it. And then later on when you search again, like the next day for product research, you're gonna see, well, screw this item. I already tried looking for this for an hour the other day. And so you kind of end up putting these items on your like, do not even care yeah. to look for list. 
Yeah. Uh, so, and, and you're going to build that list on your own. Guys, as you start searching for products, you're going to see, well, I never find dog beds, so I'm not going to waste my time even trying to search for that product. Yeah. So uh, you're, you're just going to come through a lot of things. You're just going to learn it as you go through. Say, okay, well, yeah, I'm not going to bother wasting my time on this, right? So that's kind of what's happening with this item here. So like we said before, everybody, don't spend too much time on it. It's literally you're just going through the tabs so that you're not clicking on each page individually. Uh, and right now, like, let, let's go ahead and change categories. Just so we are, just it. because this this is just not, it's not very accurate. And it's just, I feel like it's a lot of hard work just to actually find the item. It's usually a lot simpler, even if, like, the items aren't even profitable. Yeah. You can usually just see them immediately. So, yeah. right here, I already noticed that. I'm not going to continue wasting my time. Um, we're going to go ahead and just pick something else. Uh, let me see from, like, what you guys have said earlier. Just really uh, quick. See if I could just get something random. Barbecue. Barbecue. Yeah, like like a like a grill. Okay, we can or do like, that. Like a, like a grill. See what we can just put like. grill. Yeah, so we got Jeff over here. Hello, I'm here. Uh, what's up, bro? I just sped. <laughs> this guy's crazy. I just got a meeting. What are you guys doing? We're just doing some yeah, product research. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to our first Ecom Kings uh, live Amazon, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's something I've been wanting to start for a good minute, and these guys are my two right hand coaches. Um, Chris is a seven-figure seller, Andres. I don't know if he's broken it yet, but he's getting close. And yeah, so let's do some product research. Let's see. I want to show you guys how simple it is. They probably have already broken this down, but I want to show you guys how simple this is because it's not like crazy science, you know? It's very, very simple. And when you guys see how simple it is, you might get a little mad that you're not already doing it. So I'll let them take it over, but thanks, guys. Yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, thanks, it, it, yeah uh, like you he was saying, everybody, a lot of this stuff isn't really, uh, you look at it and it's like, it seems so hard just because you don't know how to do it. But right. uh, the other business models, you don't have to worry about ads. You got to worry about uh, who your audience is, if you're paying for traffic or all that nonsense. And so it's just really difficult for a beginner to get involved with that. I know one Definitely. of the barriers, that's one of the barriers that stopped me from do anything like Shopify when I first started out because I didn't oh, it was want such to get, a huge process. Yeah, you don't want to get mixed up with a lot of other things and then you just waste money in the process. Definitely. You know, like this is like this is basically you buy low and sell high. Like the same idea except you're not even buying right. <laughs> until someone's already bought from you at yeah. a higher price. Is this the same item? Can you help me figure it out? Okay, yeah. So Andres found an item here. It's ninety seven dollars and it's the backyard master grill. Okay, so what I usually do here, guys, is I'll look and see if uh, here. Let me go oh, like the here. actual item. If I can find something that's in in here that matches, so uh, expert grill. Oh, look at wait, go go up. It says XG19. Let's see okay. if we can find that on Amazon. So yeah, I'll usually just copy this and I'll just search for it here. So Command or Control F depends on whatever computer you have. So I'm not finding that in here, but that doesn't mean that it's not the item. It could yeah, just so mean that that part, that that listing, that specific thing is not on here. So this is a 30,000 BTU. It's a gas grill with some side shelves, uh, heavy duty four piece. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can find a lot of this stuff here. Kind of looks like the same. Uh, it's a 30, it is a, a 30,000 BTU. It's got the shelves. Is it a three burner? That'll usually help us figure that out. Uh, okay. So no, it says four, oh no. No, 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 no that, that, that's yeah, yeah. a three burner. Okay. burner. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Okay. So, you're going to have to look sometimes. You may have to do a little bit of hunting sometimes. Uh, okay, so that's a lot of these extra ones. I don't see it in the... Yeah. Three burner. Okay, so right down here, guys, it says it's a three burner grill. 30,000 BTU. Um, 10,000 BTU stainless steel burners, two specialized... Okay, let's look at some of the stuff down here. Uh, 40 pounds, 36. I'm just, what I'm doing now, everybody, is I'm just seeing if I can connect enough dots before I'm comfortable deciding whether this is the item that yeah. is, is actually and the item. And most of the time, it's it's a lot easier than this because they'll actually have like the actual item number or something like very, very specific yeah. to it where both both sources will actually have it. So, so for this okay, one, we're so just going to make one, guys, sure. look, Okay, so look at this. We have this picture here. It's the same damn picture. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Look, look at this thing. It's the same one here. It's got literally one, two, the four, the four chickens on there. I'm pretty confident that this is the item. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much the same yeah, item. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not really going to, we're not going to go into like competition right now. Yeah, we just want to show you guys like how easy it is. Like we just started right now and we already found something with a pretty big margin. I mean, so, this one is 193 so, so, and on Walmart it's 97. So this is 97 bucks right now. Uh, and it's selling on, let's, let me see who's selling it. This is, okay, some other dude. 
He's selling it for 100 and what? 93. That's why it's a pretty big margin for that item. And the BSR, I checked it earlier. Can, Dude, can you go back again? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back. This, this is crazy if we actually found this. It'd be faster than... Yeah. Okay. Uh... Where's the BSR? Oh, that's right there. It's 362,000. That's dude, that's still good. Yeah, and for, for the you, profit that you're getting yeah, on that. And thing. for you guys, the BSR, we won't go too much into it, but basically um Amazon has their way of ranking items based on how much they sell, right? So the number one right here says number 362,000 in patio lawn and garden. Which is the number path. one item, right? That that one probably sells like hundreds, oh, maybe yeah. thousands times a day. It's the best selling yeah. item in the category, right? So you guys might be thinking of like 362. That sounds like a 362,000 sounds like a big number. But in reality, it's on um, that. Items. That still sells a lot. Yeah. Right. So, so, so this is 380 plus thousand. Okay. Mm -hmm. So normally we typically advise right around the three hundred ish mark. Yeah. Um, but all that really does is just just how often the item sells. Yeah. So, so that that's really all that matters. But so all we did is we compared a couple things to see that we matched the item, and this is important here, guys. One of the most important things, probably. I just realized this. What? Dude, think about like people search these items. And a mach like a bot, if you have software using a, a software that goes through this sometimes, like a lot of them won't even pick up the fact that this is the same item. Mm -hmm. Like we had to check it ourselves because there was some things in there that, that weren't immediately apparent oh, yeah. to see if this was the item. But so we took that extra two, three minutes mm -hmm. and found out that it was actually the item. Yeah, right. So definitely. this is what we said earlier, guys. If you're willing to put that extra time, those extra four, five, six minutes into a listing, you could walk out with, dude, this looks like it's a $60, $50 margin. Or something yeah, like that at least so yeah, yeah so let's let's go into it man How and, I... and if, if you notice we just started right now and we already found an item but we do want to be kind of transparent with you guys it's not always like that yeah. right like the kind of the process well, so it look, could be the like first, the first category went through oh yeah we it went was, through a category was, already uh, and we didn't have any luck dog the, beds the dog beds yeah and it wasn't let me see who said barbecue i don't know if you meant barbecue sauce man or if you actually meant a barbecue <laughs> grill but uh, yeah we just we just got grilled we, we just we assume that you meant a grill so that's so okay so this item it's found on walmart it's at this price there's three left um that doesn't really matter too much because walmart will usually always update their stock anyway so this doesn't look like it's being sold by any weird third parties i always just make sure it's all right it's sold by walmart mm -hmm. or any of them that like are Even popular if it's a third party like, seller. like wayfair or hay needle because they're trusted yeah, suppliers yeah anyway so um all right sorry man i interrupted you but no it's fine i just wanted to you know kind of show them that yeah. like it was that easy we already found it um i kind of want to go through a couple of these just to see if we yeah, kind of yeah, like so, get lucky so, just so you guys can see the process so we got right one we'll keep that one there and then yeah, we'll yeah. go back and calculate like you know profit and stuff to see definitely so let's go on to the next one um for this one we're just gonna do the same thing right oh we're by just the gonna... way everybody don't be that guy who goes and picks that item oh yeah and list it i bet you don't, don't you know, do it every single class happens yeah it's... so every time we've done one of these even in our classes where there's only like 20 30 people there no matter how many times we tell everybody, don't copy the sample item, everyone does. So you're wasting your time because I guarantee by tomorrow, however many there are listed, there's going to be like double or triple and you're just not going to have an opportunity. So don't waste your time. Yeah. Don't be that person. And another thing is the reason they're talking so much about saying like, you know, just check what the third party is. It's because they're not subject to the same return and exchange policies oh, as Walmart. So Walmart... True has really easy to use return policies but a third party seller on there they may say they don't honor those same return policies so that's why it's really important that you if you are going to use a third party that you find out what their return policies are so that you don't think you can return it and you really can't exactly because so. normal normally walmart they give you like three months Nick, so like they won't for like third party sellers okay i don't know if we have a third mic we... yeah it's uh and, and that's the Sorry, reason you can just talk in Andre's chest i just talk really loud yeah here, just like it? scream in my ear and you're good the other reason uh nick mentioned that as well everybody is walmart is uh yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, it's, it's a very large supplier and, and they're one of the most reputable uh, reputable ones that we know of so that's why we opened it with that but there are other ones that you can use oh definitely yeah and um one other thing um if you guys notice there's this um extension here it's called amazon assistant what it's supposed to do is that it, it's just supposed to show you directly if there's the item is on amazon so for this one it shows it it doesn't show it for most of them for whatever reason on Walmart, it, it doesn't really like function as properly, but with other suppliers, better. it does. It used to work better. Yeah, yeah that's just did. an extra piece of tool, guys. If you, if you get it, it's a like Google Chrome extension. Yeah, it's Amazon free. Assistant. You guys can get it if you want to uh, save some time. It it's just helps you. You don't have to suppliers. click on a million like listings at yeah, once. So exactly. Said, what program do you use for finding products? So you guys are just explaining it's manual right now. It's this, man this is manual right, right now? now? Yeah, because guys... That's the simplest way. What I mean, do we tell everybody in our... Uh, if you start using software right off the bat without having any knowledge of how to do things normally and manually like this... What happens is if that software goes out of commission, 
if there's an update on whatever supplier you're using or you're connecting it with, now you're mm -hmm. left defenseless, not knowing how to make your own money because you were dependent on a software. Exactly. Starting out, right? Software is just supposed to be used as an extension of your knowledge on how to run the business. And if you can't run it naturally, then you're not going to have a successful long-term business in this business model, right? 100%. So. 100%. Totally mm -hmm. agree with Chris. And mm -hmm. we, we've always been a firm believer of this, even back like when, when, when we were really teaching like about eBay and all of that. It's because... They, exactly like Chris said, if you don't understand the foundation, you don't really truly understand how the software works. So if the software has a bug, it goes down, what happens? And if you don't know how to fix that, and let's just say there's a 12 hour period where the software isn't there. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're already in the point where you're doing like a 20,000 a, $20, a month gross business, you have enough sales, customer service, emails, inventory, prices, and out of stocks changing that if you don't realize that that's down and fix it, you're going to have enough complaints in that 10, 12 hour period that your account's going to get shut down because of negative metrics. So really, really important yeah. to understand how stuff works. So if shit does happen, you can fix it. Yeah, Nick, and not only that, but think about like you when you start to get to a point where you hire VAs and you have to build a team. If you only like teach them like how to use softwares and they're yeah. running your entire store and they don't know how to, you know, they don't know what to do if something happens, you're going to be, you have to like know the business. Like you have to know what to do to be yeah, able to tell them, hey, they're going to go, oh, the button doesn't work. Yeah, the software's Sorry. not working yeah. anymore. And that's it. They're like, out of business. They're not going to know what to do. orders got to be put in and now you can't put them in. So. Exactly. So. Uh, okay, yo, so guys, before we go any farther, um, I'm going to have in the chat of this YouTube our Ecom Kings Discord. Now, I built that. We built that three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and uh, this live is kind of the launch of that. I was going to do um, more of a heads up so everyone could be here. There's about a thousand members already. So if you're in here, um, the link was just posted. You guys can join that. All the people that you guys are learning from in here, along with more coaches, along with more experienced people are all in that chat and it's completely free. So you guys might as well be in it. So, yeah. and then that'll be able to notify you every time we go live. If you're not going to be, you know, on Instagram, the second I post it or whatever, you guys mm -hmm. will get a notification every time we're live. So join the discord. Um, like I said, dude, we're not upselling you guys on anything tonight. We're not doing anything. This is just going to be our weekly live product research thing. You know, mm -hmm. it's just the basics and. And showing you guys how to make an extra 50 to 100 bucks, um, you know, a week, a day, depending on how much effort you put into this. Now, there is, it comes down to, yeah. there's better, there's better techniques than this. I'm um, not better, but faster. Um, but this is the best and the easiest for the average person. So, it doesn't guys, cost anything. No, yeah. cost anything. This we just, free. we just showed you guys all this, you needed. Yeah. This is literally, taking literally from like, one like, thing to another. like, I want everyone when they have a chance, when they ask for the next product, everyone just type the most obscene shit. Like the, the craziest stuff. So you guys know we can't bullshit. No, this. that's what we asked them. We told them to just pick a random yeah, product. Yeah, we picked So that's easy. So oh, like, yeah. let's say yeah. like you guys pick something. Be Dildo. unique about it. Don't do that one. <laughs> um, yeah. Don't do that one. Come in, Louie. Um, don't do that profitable. one. Well, you don't want to do those. Yeah, yeah but, those are ones but I saw. definitely I would recommend you guys do something unique so they can show you the real process. I guess they found a profitable item instantly. Yeah, look at this, um, Jeff. Look at this one. 97 on Walmart. Look at this. 193. Yeah, that's a massive it's a, margin. It's a fat profit, yeah. Um, yeah, and then you'll find items, guys, that make you a $7 margin. You'll find items that make you a $2 margin, and they all add up to make you your store's margin. Exactly. You're not going to look for a certain profit margin on every item or whatever. Yeah, um, you basically take what you can get. Yeah, and really quick, uh, Matt, you're asking, uh, do you guys use a specific website for product research such as Jungle Scout? I think Jungle Scout is more of like an FBA type of um. So let's, let's break down this process. So essentially what they're doing, guys, is they're going on Amazon with a random item that you guys picked, right? And what they're doing is they're doing they're backtracking to find the supplier of that item. So have this clear, like it, it's a few step process. They find an item on Amazon that's that they think is profitable. They go backtrack and they find the supplier. Whatever method they use to find the supplier, you guys will learn that here. And then what they do is show you guys what that item is sourced at and what website it is, and then you guys can literally list it. Now, please don't list these items because, like, I guarantee this grill will have like ten sellers. Oh tomorrow. yeah, we're it, it always. So happens. ten of the two hundred fifty people on here. Yeah. Will go be scumbags, and that's what it is. But the reason I say that is because if there's ten sellers overnight, you guys probably won't be the one to sell it. So take the things you guys learned today and find your own items with this same process. And when we do ask for um, items, be unique and watch them like do actually do the product research because it's it's interesting. You know, it's mm -hmm. not always quick. So I'll let them get back to it. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's asking. Mike's asking. Are you fulfilling orders manually on each sale? Uh, it depends. Mike, uh, you mentioned something about FBA. Your FBA guy here, you know, drop shipping experience. So it, it's, it really comes down to whether you have an employee that's going to do it for you mm -hmm. or you want to do it yourself. I recommend manually doing it yourself because then 
when you do hire somebody, you can tell them how to do it for yeah, you. Yeah, you have to learn the business. So you, you have can't to learn just, it for you, yeah. And, I mean, in the beginning, you're going to have, when your store starts kicking off, you're probably going to have an obscene amount of orders once the fourth quarter starts kicking in. So think about, you know, possibly looking into hire somebody right away mm. when you start getting to that point. All right, so or have a video in place, something at least to help you. Don't want to get caught completely uh, off guard with that. Yeah, Jack, and no, we don't use AliExpress because on Amazon, people want their items quickly, right? Nobody wants to wait like three weeks, maybe a month for their items. So it's just not smart to use Chris, overseas suppliers. Chris, yeah. people are asking about the classes. Just let them know there's none. Uh, yeah, yeah. Classes for a while, yeah, so. so there's no classes in the books right now, guys. All we're doing is just focused on just showing people some free value here, giving some dropshipping advice, questions, open Discord. So as soon as we do have that, guys, I know that Jeff will be on top of that, letting everybody know when we want to launch those. But for now, there's there's no classes on Nothing the books. Nothing for you guys to buy, you know? Um, and then let them know that, you know, we have a bunch of clients that we run their business for them. So this yeah. is essentially what we do for them. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 all this stuff, guys, e-commerce, e Amazon-related, it's accessible to everybody. Um, you just got to find the time to really invest in it or invest your time into it. Uh, so all right so next eBay drop shipping eBay we don't teach it all anymore so this is Amazon specific if you really are curious on eBay you guys are actually on my YouTube watching this there's like some old videos on here you can go watch those uh, can you do this without credit absolutely you can do it without credit the thing is is that you're cycling money right so you're going to walmart.com purchasing with a debit or credit card doesn't cost you any different they don't charge you an extra fee so you're going over and then shipping it to your customer on Amazon. So there's no reason not to use a credit card if you can use one because you get points, reward right. points, cash back, whatever, but you could do this with a debit card. If for some reason your credit is so bad, you can't even get approved for the shittiest secured credit card somehow, then yes, you could do this with a debit card, but there's really no reason not to. Yeah. That's the point of the credit. Uh, yeah, so you can go ahead and continue, man. I'm going to answer some yeah, of questions. Yeah, just keep answering questions. I'm just going to, just so you guys know, I'm probably not going to be speaking that much, but I'm just going to go over the same process, just going through some of these items, see if we get lucky again and we find something. Yeah, we're no more talking, dude. Sorry. So there, you're, <laughs> you're shipping from Walmart. I assume there won't be one-day shipping. Yeah, uh, there's going to be items that have one-day shipping. Uh, there's going to be items that have two-day shipping. Mm -hmm. Some will have standard shipping. It just depends on uh, what item it is that Amazon is selling. Uh, let's see. Can you give listing examples for the way you drop ship? So, Marcus, I'm not sure what you mean by listing examples. We just showed an example. Um, if you didn't get on the live a little earlier, basically we went onto a supplier and searched on that supplier to see if we could find the item on Amazon to see if it was selling and if it was selling profitably and if it's gonna gonna be an item that's worth listing based off of the ranking, which we talked to everybody about what the BSR is. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it real quick or just know that it's a bestseller ranking. Uh, and what it entails is how often an item is selling. Uh, is 3K capital enough? D that's good, man. It it's going to be enough to get you to where... It all depends on your items. If you start listing expensive items, then whenever you have to make those orders, you're going to run out of capital pretty quickly if you're selling you know, $800 grills. So if you only have 3K capital, then you just have to manage your your financials a little better to make sure that you're not overextending yourself. Is this the same item? Uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, no, it's a different color, bro. Look. It's, uh, no, it's black too. Oh, yeah, but the top yeah, part—the yeah, yeah. top, top part, part is black. Oh man, yeah. that would have been a good item. Uh, do you list the items on Amazon, and then when someone buys it, you go to Walmart and buy it? Yes. So you know, that's exactly what the whole process is, and not just with drop shipping on Amazon exclusively. It's the same for eBay or other platforms that you use out there. You are listing an item that you know is on a reputable source, and you're selling it before you've actually purchased it. Okay, that's what that whole process is. So yes, that's what you would be doing. So Kapan's asking, I know with Shopify dropshipping, there is there can be a delay of receiving money. Is it? Uh, yes. So good question, guys. Really uh, good question. If you sell on Amazon, you have to be aware that Amazon holds your money for two weeks, plus for like incidentals like returns, A to Z claims, problems with customers, things like that. They want to make sure that they can prove that you're a legitimate seller and you're not going to sell a bunch of products and then leave the country and steal everybody's money. So Amazon's going to pay you out every two weeks. In the beginning, they're going to hold an extra amount of money from you. To make sure that you ship your uh, your items out and they're, they're delivered on time to your customer and th there's no mm -hmm. issues so be aware that there's a two-week period and that's really the whole reason why nick was talking about the credit and and things like that because you need to be able to buy these items up front you're not going to buy the item two weeks later when you get paid from, from amazon because your buyer's going to be pissed at you uh jermaine amazon keeps delaying my application they can you just got to be relentless relentless with them just call them every day uh send them emails every single day that's the only way you're going to get through them 
think about how big Amazon is. They're literally a billion dollar company. And so one email, you need to be sending multiple emails. All right, no more Q&A. Let's go to cool. the next item. Okay, All now right. I already so, found the one. I'm trying to see if this actually makes money. So this red grill. So it's seventy one ninety nine, and I found it for nine about $95. Let me see. 71, okay, is it, um, the, same, is it the same one? Yeah. Oh, so what is it, May 14? No, um, no, it's, um, hold on, I'm trying to do the, so we don't have the little calculator we usually have. So, just kind of like roughly, let me see. Let me Four see if I can, I can find it and then uh, yeah, 20. put it in there. Just yeah, so this is, it is a profitable item. Because with, a, with about it, a 22% margin that I took, including oh, tax, okay, okay, okay. it's about 74 and then it's 72 here. Right. So it's, uh, it's this isn't, so, okay guys, so we just found like an item. Um, this isn't a huge margin. Um, this is about like maybe a couple of dollars. Um, but still, this is one of those items that you just you put on your store, right? Like we won't get too into it, but you know, you, you kind of like want to have like a lot of volume. Yeah, you know, so you have a lot of sales. Yeah, some items making you a large profit. Some items will make you, like Jeff was saying earlier, five bucks, four bucks, right? But you yeah. got to understand how that compounding effect works. So yeah, you, times yeah, exactly. exactly. You sell an item that makes you seven bucks, you sell it ten times at seventy dollars. If Not you do that, that five times a week, yeah, you know that's. I mean, you guys have to remember, it's not like we're holding these items in a warehouse or something. Like, we don't have to, like, you know, there's no liability. It's not like we're buying a whole bunch of these and then just, like, risking all this money just to kind of, like, you know, store them and then just maybe make a dollar or two. It's like these items, like, we're only going to buy them if they actually sell. So just, like, kind of, like, listing an item like this, it, it was just, even if you can make a couple dollars, like, I would yeah. just list it. It so, may or may not sell, right? But let, let's actually check the BSR. I didn't. Let me see if this is something that, that sells often. Um, let me see. This one, it does not have a BSR. I don't see like it has any reviews. So for this item, what likely happens is that this is like a very, very new listing. So it mean, there's probably not enough like sales history for them to like calculate yeah. how much it actually sells. So this isn't. So that's like it's like an item that you could list, but it's you like, might not like well cost it. you anything. Exactly. Yeah. So this is like you're going through the rent. You're going through the listings. You're going through the process. You come across this item. You see that it's profitable. It's from a legit supplier. And you're going to decide whether you want to list it or not based on the BSR. Exactly. So I would list it only because I'm we right there. I already found it. I, already found found it. it. Yeah. I know there's a margin. And if it doesn't sell, I'm not losing money. It's not like eBay where they would charge you. Oh, yeah, per listing. Like, or like, per exactly. listing or per fee. You know, on Amazon, per, it's unlimited. So. Yeah. So really, I, I would list this item. I would put it up. If oh, it sells, 100%. it sells, right? Um, and then now I'm the one that's profiting from it. Exactly. Yeah. So we already found like two good items. One really big margin and one not so big. I would list both of them, like you said. So... So, so far, if, you know, if we were just, I was just at home, like, doing this, yeah, this so would we'll, be a good day already. We'll keep tabs of the ones we kept, and at the end, we'll just calculate how much profit you could have made off of just sitting if you were actually doing this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so let me look for a couple more. Uh, Javier, it's a little bit different. It's not exactly how we did it on eBay, just because eBay uses a whole different ranking system. They use, you know, Cassini and other things like that, so it's, oh, just, yeah. it's a little it different. different. That Chargrill, okay, that one. Let me see... Or 67. That is not the same one, no. No. Let me see. And, and see, guys, I just kind of, like, want to do this as quickly as possible. Like, not spend way too much time. Remember, at the end of the day, even if you could save, like, 20 seconds per item that you're trying to look for, it's, like, 20 times however many items you go through in a day. It ends up being a lot of time, right? So, let me see. Is this one the same item? 700. 700 FB pallet grill. 700 it's, square inch. Oh, I mean, either way, it doesn't look like there might be a profit. 335 and, and then this was like 390. No, that's not, no, 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 that's not, not enough. enough. So you just open 30 tabs and go through them. Yeah. So if you can save, if you can save like five seconds on each tab, doing that hundreds of times, you're going to start cutting hours off your workload just by doing that one thing, right? And that's just one competitive advantage. So the more you do that, just the more stacked. Your ability is going to go through, yeah, of just going through items, right? This is this Wait, is literally the hardest part. So a lot of you guys are seem to be caught up on the fact that the customer is about to receive an item from a different company. That is a very common question. It's like the number one. Con I've been teaching dropshipping and doing <laughs> dropshipping for like five years now, and it's probably the number one question that's ever that been asked. Be. And I think everyone in this room has asked me that question before they took a class. So everyone you guys are learning from, actually, Chris was one of my first 50 students. Andres was probably one of my first, like, 300 students. No, I was, I was with the same with Chris. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you just yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, yeah. he joined as one of my first 50 students, too, and then did nothing for, like, a year and a half. <laughs> and then... Basically. Killed it. So, um... That's kind of so... the process. Is like, people become my students, they kill it, and then they join my, like, kind of smaller circle, and they help teach. But... It's funny because a lot of you guys are caught up on this thing, but there's no reason to be because probably out of the, the sales in this room, um, 
you know, Pablo did even 75,000 this month in sales. And I'm talking like $30 items. And he's maybe had zero complaints about packing. Um, I think it was more of a complaint back in the eBay days. Oh, yeah. Um, but it seems that Amazon customers, they don't give a shit, you know? It's not like that. It's like, it just happens. It sounds like it does happen. Like, I probably had it out of thousands of orders. It's probably happened to me like three you times. You are going to get that those one three times, guy. You always get someone that's unhappy about something. That's yeah. Gross, right? Yeah. So if they are unhappy with packing... Hey, dude, you want to ref- you want yeah, to you return, return? it? Don't be yeah, you want to return it, dude? You literally go on the other, you go on the supplier website. Let's get say a it's free Walmart. Label. You get a free label. You send it to the customer. He sends it back. No harm, no foul on anything. That is literally the worst case scenario. But that never happens. Like that. It never. It yeah, never I mean, happens, think about how many. Honestly. Like, if you were to buy an item, and it, as long as you get it in the mail, it's the same item you bought. So you guys can see, there's a lot of people in this chat that are saying, you know, they do drop shipping, and it's never been a problem for them. So you guys, it's, it's a thing that people get caught up on, and then they do it, and they realize nobody complains. And the worst part is that that kind of like keeps some people from starting. starting. Yeah, they like, will. They think they of will. like something like that that's going to be something huge, and it's just it's not really well, it's, a big I deal. I think it's easier to find reasons why they can't do something than that's, why they that's can't. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, that's going to be the thing that holds most most of you guys back in life is finding something, some reason you guys can't do this. Whether it's oh, I only have you know seven hundred bucks instead of the two thousand dollars they recommend, I'm not going to start for. 10 more months. Exactly. You guys probably won't ever save up that $2,000. That's how humans are, right? They, they make that excuse and then they hold on to it. So if you think people are going to give you negative feedback for something that every person that says they're not, you're not going to get it, every person that's experienced is that's not going to happen to you. It's just rare mm-hmm. and it still holds you back. Then it's just a personal fault and you can't help everyone. That's the truth. You guys are on here. You guys are obviously interested in learning more. Don't let something stupid like that hold you back from you guys starting your own Amazon business tonight. You guys can go on Amazon, get approved as a seller and start. Um, the reason I'm sharing this information, and like I said, that we have better techniques in this, and I'm not going to show you guys them for free, um, and you guys actually can't even pay for them right now. But what I will say is you don't need better techniques than this. This is actually the cornerstone, and I guarantee, um, you know, the most of the people that are killing it on Amazon right now, including Andres, still do this method to this day. Because software can only help you so much. Software can only find profit mm-hmm. margins so much. You guys feel me? Um, Andres already found another item, but... All I want to say, guys, is this business is like one of the few businesses in the entire world right now that you don't need anything to start besides an access to the internet and a credit card. Like, and maybe an 18-year-old ID, right? That's it. Yeah. Um, just you can't lot. start at 16 without your parents or something. But I will say, you guys do not need, like every other business that's ever been started in this world, you guys do not need to have a storefront. You guys do not need to order inventory. You guys do not need to have employees. When you guys get your first employee that's not a virtual assistant, if you guys ever open a retail storefront, you guys will soon realize employees are very expensive. To have employees, you have to pay into their social security. You have to pay employment taxes. You have to have insurance on your employees. There's a lot of things that go into it. This business, you need nothing. Um, so if you guys are in a situation where you only have 500, 1,000 bucks, 1,500 bucks, you guys can start flipping that money with this process. Um, with just a few hours a night, so don't don't look too far into this. Don't ask yourself too many questions that'll stop you. Because I can't tell you how many people that I've that have seen my profile in the last six years and chose not to do this exact process. And yeah, for like a dumb like question, the, the fifteen people that built seven figure businesses the last few years. But there's been thousands through the training because or hundreds, and that's because they let stupid shit like that affect them. So you guys gotta you guys gotta zone in on what actually works and listen to what these guys are saying because they know what they're doing. Yeah, that's really important. Just everything he's saying is just you, you always have to be resourceful. I mean, if you kind of go go through like a bump in the road, it's just you have to understand there's always a solution to it, right? Well, that, that dude, that's right. Uh, that's so true because a lot of people they'll they'll say, well, if you think that your question that you have nobody's asked the same thing, then it. you're probably delusional. Because but think about it, you're. So many people are doing this that the odds that nobody has asked your question on Google is ridiculous. Nick Fitz, when he was a coach of DSM a while back, he would be Googling questions from students because they didn't want to Google the answer themselves and almost like 90% of the qu- answers were on Google because That's he searched for it. That's the worst part, dude. It's like, it's like people will, I have like VIP group chats from like old students and people ask things that you could Google. Right. Yeah, and it's not that we don't want to answer for you guys, it's just no, like- No, but it's like, why do you disrespect my time so much to ask me to figure, to Google something for you? Right. No, dude, but it's not even that, it's like, for example, you might ask it in the group chat, and it's like somebody, by the time they get back to you, it could be like five, 10 minutes, yeah. it could be like hours. Could've done it they, could've, they could've Googled this, spend seven seconds typing whatever question it was, and it would've dude, been the like the second option. The number one skill that so. pays out in life is always resourcefulness. Always. I've told everyone that's ever learned from me, it's gonna be resourcefulness that pays out at the end of the day. If you, can't, if you don't know how to do something, or you have a question about something, I can almost promise you that someone else in the world has had that question first and it's on the internet. 
you guys are one of the few generations that have access to the internet, so <laughs> your parents didn't have it, your parents' parents definitely didn't have it, you know what I'm saying? Like, you guys have access to almost every question ever answered, so use it, take advantage of it. Um, Dude, making a business, a business has never been as easy as just kind of like doing it. Yeah, well, 20 years ago, nobody could make is, a dollar is, online, right? The fact right? that people make five or $10,000 from this is it's actually stupid to me. Yeah, it is stupid. <laughs> I, I just... I swear to God, this is like the business I've done since I was like 13, 14 years old. But it's stupid that you anyone can go on tonight and make 550 to 100 bucks. That's stupid to me. But the thing is, is what separates this from getting oversaturated is the fact that most of you guys on here won't do it. Like that's what separates people like these guys and people making money from, you know, the fact that this could get oversaturated. If everyone I've ever showed this business model to decided to be in a like a full-time dropshipper, <laughs> saturation might increase a bit, but it's never the case. So it's it's always yeah. And, and a lot of these platforms are pretty good with kicking out the people who aren't good sellers, guys. So it's a self-cleaning business. If you start slacking on your customer service and how you're dealing with your business, the platform's going to kick you off. Amazon is the largest online company in the world. If you think that you're going to go onto their platform and try to sell as a privilege on their on their on their home turf. They're just going to remove you. That you are literally a drop, a peon in the bucket. Like you're just nothing to them. So it, you have to understand that you have the ability and the resources to actually make money online for free almost. So just treat that with a bit of respect. Know that as long as you play by the rules, and the rules are going to change sometimes, but you have to understand that if you're able to stick to the rules and stay on the platform and sell, you can easily earn a profit. Let me let me paint a, a, a clear picture. We're going to do 20 more minutes, and I'm kicking these coaches off. So. Um Essentially, I have another question that I need to paint a clear picture for you guys because it doesn't seem like you guys are some of you guys are understanding. Essentially, what we do on Amazon is we don't do the same strategy as Shopify dropshippers. Okay, what we do is is I'll give you guys a statistic. Let me just paint a picture for you. Fifty-two percent of all online sales in 2018 was done on Amazon in the United States. So every dollar that was spent online on a computer, on a phone, whatever, fifty-two of it was spent on Amazon. So we don't do what Shopify does where you guys have to find your own product and then market it, run ads, run, you know, whatever ads to try to find your audience. Amazon already has 52% of the United States audience and a lot of the global audience. So if you guys are on here, what we're doing is we're showing you guys products that are already selling. They're just selling for more than other websites. And so you just take advantage of the fact that Amazon has a customer base that trusts um, Amazon more than any other supplier. So if you look at, you know, for Walmart, like, dude, I would never shop on Walmart. I'd always buy everything on Amazon. But that's who I am. Some people only shop on Walmart. 52% of the United States agrees that they're pretty loyal to Amazon because Amazon usually has the cheapest price, the fastest shipping, and the best customer service on any retailer online. So when you have loyal, 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 loyal um, customers like that, they're just going to trust that that $192 grill that they saw on Amazon is how much that grill costs. And they're not going to go research that grill model and try to find other things um and try to get price check and most people don't do that online I mean, people want to click and done and yeah, not only that but they trust the platform they know if something goes wrong they're gonna get a return they're gonna get their money back like right? loyalists people, people, why people buy apple yeah. for 20 years even though it may not do the same like any better things than their so last model are better than yeah. apple yeah. but you know people, people just trust it they just trust it that's yeah. what it comes down to guys so there's no ads there's nothing once you guys find this product that's already selling and you guys throw it on your store it's probably bound to eventually sell um, and that's if you do the research that it's actually selling. If you find a product that has a $1 million margin, but it will never sell because nobody's looking for it, it's the exact same scenario. It'll just never sell. So now you're looking at things that already sell. Um, looks like you already found another product, am I right? Oh, no, that one was not. Oh. There wasn't a good margin on that. So you guys can see this process. As I've been talking and as I've been blabbering, Andres has still been doing product research. He's looking at lawnmowers. Did someone, yeah. did someone suggest lawnmowers? No, yeah. somebody had put it earlier in lawnmower. I kind of just changed so, just to show you guys. Well, yeah, I'll, say, I'll tell them after. No, I was going to address something that this King Snow mentioned. So he says, this method of selling on Amazon is not allowed and you will be banned eventually. So let me just touch on what that means, guys. If you look up what dropshipping is almost on every online platform, they're going to tell you that uh, it's not something that they support, right? But what you are kind of failing to understand here is that Amazon makes... 15% of every single sale that you make as a third-party seller, right? Because of that, as long as you're taking care of your customers and you're doing things the right way, they're making money off of you. 
and they make millions of dollars on a daily they basis. Have that, they have that in there as a disclaimer to kick you off whenever you do poor selling practices. Exactly. That's the reality. So like if you have terrible shipping times because you're drop shipping, they're going to say your drop shipping is against our rules. But if your shipping times are within their metrics and everything is good, they will not kick you off. So King Snow, you're number one wrong, but you're also right. So it is against their, their terms of service or whatever. Doesn't mean it's against the law. It doesn't mean they're going to sue you. It doesn't mean anything bad is going to happen. As long as you stay within their metrics and you don't get in trouble um, with poor shipping times, poor customer service, poor anything. Every, any platform is going to kick you even without that rule. They're just going to say that you're not a good seller. But there's always someone that says that to me too yeah. when we talk about Amazon dropshipping. And it's just another reason for someone not to start. Sure. So, so again, dude, it's like you're just you're pretty much just telling people that they shouldn't start this business because of a technicality. And that technicality is there for Amazon's protection and not to just disbar people. So at the end of the day, dude, like you shouldn't sound too confident in something you know nothing about. It's the reality. And usually people that say that or talk shit are the ones that fucked up their store by having poor metrics. Yeah, that's the thing goes. Late. And then they say, hey, dude, it was against Amazon's term of service. That's why I got shut down. It's like, no, you just fucking sucked, dude. <laughs> that's it. You just fucking sucked at doing this business model and you weren't on top of it. Yeah, literally, I'm Because it's weird that we have hundreds and hundreds of stores and, and students and clients that do fine with this, this model and they don't get shut down. You would think if it was against their terms of service, someone doing 200000 a month would get shut down, you know? Like, that's that's thousands of orders a month. Yeah, that's a lot of money Amazon's or making off of you. we just all slip under the radar? <laughs> yeah, no, that's... It's it's the fact that people just don't know how to run the business, so something happens and then they just blame the entire exactly. system instead of learning from a better mentor or better teacher or finding something better to learn the information from you can go on google and, and look like this model is trend. you could literally go to google and look up this model right now and it would pop up right so you can verify it. it's not like we're giving you any smoke and mirrors it'll literally this model is on google but most people aren't going to take the time to go google something for an hour and learn how to do it yeah so if you guys notice i did end up changing the category uh, i mean well rather the item i just kind of wanted to change it up um we were having some good luck doing the um the grills Girls have always had good margins, I don't know why. Yeah, that was really good. We found a couple of good items. I think we found like four or five. Um, I didn't get the chance to talk to you guys about this one that I found. Um, this one was pretty good. Uh, I don't know how much money Andre, it is. I don't want to do it Before he goes into that, did I get rich drop shipping? Um, it depends on your definition of rich. I made about 60000 a month at 13 drop shipping Neo points. So that's your definition of rich. I, sh I sure it started. It's definitely started my journey. That's the truth. So. This one looks good. 274. Let's see if it's yeah, the same item. Same item. Uh, so 21, is it 140 cc? All right, let's, let's check the description. Let's see. 132 cc. Uh, so it's, it's, it's not, not as, but see if you can find, usually if you see the, um, yeah. uh, no, that's, no, that's not one. Not the same if, if you see, like if you go to Walmart, mm -hmm. see if the, if the 40 is like up in the suggested items. Oh, so I like it that. may be like close by, like oh, around yeah. here. One third, one sixty cc's. There may be a one forty here. Uh, no, sometimes it won't pop up. Yeah. But if you sometimes it look like if you actually have, let me let me see if I can. Uh, Joshua, uh, where's the sixty-seven thousand with automation this month? Something ridiculous, bro. Like I, it's it's. I was looking at it yesterday. It's, it's something massive, like, even last month was, was crazy. Uh, King Snow, why don't you sell wholesale on Amazon when the margins are better and you're not going to get suspended at all? Number one, you can get suspended for wholesale because you're wholesaling inventory. You are not an authorized distributor of the inventory. It's actually the exact same thing that you're doing with dropshipping. You're not an authorized distributor of the inventory, which means you can get suspended for the exact same thing, except you're probably just using fake invoices or something. Um... Number one, the margins are not better because you cannot control your flow of inventory. So if you have, if you're doing wholesale FBA, you can never control how much invent inventory your suppliers are giving you or not giving you. I think it's a great business model. I don't think one's right. better than the other, and I think you're a piece of shit though for doing this on the live. So I will roast you. I don't mind, and there's no way you make more doing wholesale than probably any of these guys doing drop shipping. So you're just being annoying, and I will ban you. 
And the whole idea, dude, is this, this, not everybody can get into wholesale. Not everybody can get into wholesale. Not everybody has thousands this of is dollars to start. A few hundred bucks, and it's yeah. also different. It's just um, wholesale is also you're investing in, in um, inventory before. I'm not saying it's it's a bad business model, like Jeff was saying, but it's also like this. You don't really purchase products until yeah. it's actually wholesale you know, too, which is the ironic part, bro. But yeah, there's nothing wrong people. with it. It's just Literally, different. I have a whole fucking division next door that does wholesale with Kenzo. So. <laughs> You don't buy from authorized distributors if you have good margins on wholesale, number one. So they're lying to you, buddy. That's what wholesale is. What was the price again? Uh, 117. Yeah. 146. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that is... Yeah, no, no, no. So, so oh, uh, here. Look, I, cl I clicked on this here. So... It's a waste oh, of you found time, it? bro. I do this shit for free, and there's yeah, yeah, yeah. always some dumbass. So, let's, uh, what's the price? Here, put the price in there. That's what it tells us. Happens all the time, man. I'm I know, sorry. but it gets, it gets me hated when I just talk so fucking confidently. I never get hated. Oh, man, this is always Oh, okay, just, just copy just, just copy it and open up a new, uh, thing, yeah. yeah. So, copy. And then, no, 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 just hit, yeah, yeah, new. Uh, spreadsheet. Um, how do we keep all these items tracked? So you're an automation client, Josh. You should you should have access to your sheet, bro. He does. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It. Um. The the Unless way I that. I don't understand the question. Yeah. You know, the way you do it, man, is is there's a lot of ways to do it. You can do it manually. You just keep it in a spreadsheet. That's really all it is. Uh, it just comes down to how well you can organize it. So if you have a spreadsheet that tracks where you're getting the oh, item he's from. Keeping um. He's asking where we we keep track of margins and updated prices and stuff. Oh, that's on. That's on the sheet. That's. That's on the sheet. Okay, yeah. So, uh, but what's that price? And who's competing with it? Um, let me see. I have too many things open right now. It's kind of annoying me. Oh, okay. It's not this one. Okay, that so one. other suppliers we recommend. Then I'm going to jump off here um, and go make dinner. Uh, so a couple suppliers we recommend off the top of my head. We can yeah, do Walmart, no. Hay Needle, Overstock, Wayfair. Wayfair. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, bed, 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 Costco, bed, you have Costco, Bed Bath, Bed, bed Bath and Beyond. Bed Bath and Beyond, that's a good one. Bed Bath yeah. and Beyond. Uh, there's tons of them. Zorro is good. Home Depot. There it is. So there's a lot of different options you can use. As you start to sell more from them or buy more from them, you're gonna know which ones are easier to deal with that that you like or you prefer. Good shit, Kevin. That's awesome. What is it? He said he just he already found a good product just off the info. Of this oh, time. nice. See, it's that easy. You guys Kevin, saw how fast Kevin, it was. Kevin, tell me what your margin was, bro. So, can you use eBay as a supplier? I don't know if you're gonna say, but so you, yeah, you, yeah, you can. can use eBay. You just you gotta you gotta be wary because uh, it's weird. It's, it's weird. You're, if you do that, you have to make sure. The only time I ever would drop ship something off eBay if it's an actual store, if it's like Target, like Target uh, has yeah, a store yeah. on eBay or like Sometimes Hay Needle. Sometimes they have sales that aren't reflecting on their website. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can get you can get a really good deal on those, and you don't pay tax a lot of the time on there either. So that helps. But if it's like a third party seller, unless they have like fifty thousand reviews or something like that, and I know I'm gonna get the product, yeah. then I'm not gonna try to because it could be another drop shipper. So now yeah. I'm, I'm passing the Could buck be. along to somebody else for me to depend on getting the item. I just don't want to do that. Yeah, and just th that's what it is. eBay is pretty much like a garage Let's go ahead and, and so let's look at the first. Do we still have the first item up? Yeah, we have all of them. Oh, okay. I think so. I think so let's look at that first one and let's calculate what the profit was because we have the sheet now. And then we can add up how many, how many we found in like that 30 minute period. Okay. Um, just to show like what was actually possible. Like doing everything organically, no software. I feel like I found more, but mm. I can't. That's all right. It doesn't it's, matter. It we doesn't have... matter. Here, click okay, on. Okay, yeah, this is the first one. Okay. So the first one, yeah. So go to the first one. This yeah, it's one. this one. Okay, so it was ninety-seven bucks on Walmart. Yeah, let me actually. Didn't we say Target for a supplier? Target. Um, uh, Target works. Just they're just more strict. So you just gotta be. Uh, oh, uh, uh, Target's good supplier guys. You just gotta be careful. You with just them. gotta be careful with them. Some people they like. Some people they just cancel orders for. You so said Target sells it for fifty bucks. It's selling on Amazon for four hundred right now. 50 bucks that's a pretty ridiculous margin just make sure bro when you see that like if something looks too good to be true just make sure you verify uh because you don't want to be sending an expensive item that's wrong to a customer because if you send a bottle of listerine to somebody it's two dollars and somebody complains amazon's probably not going to be as strict but if you send a 500 hundred dollar item that somebody oh, yeah. paid for it wrong then they're going to be calling every day and you want extra you don't want those extra eyes on your account is that yeah. a 60 dollar profit yeah Okay, that's massive, guys. So, all right, so that's sixty bucks on that just on that one item. Hey, so what we're gonna do also is, did you guys make this calculator? Oh, uh, Nick did. Nick, Nick, Nick did. Nick, so Nick, what you guys Nick, should do is is file, make a copy, and we'll put this in the Discord as a file for free that they can download. Yeah, we can do it. That's yeah, really it's good all calculator. the link. We just gotta give them the original link. So, like I said, guys, uh, I'll re I'll have Steven, our, our IT guy, throw the uh, link back in the chat for the Discord. If you guys want this calculator, 
We'll also probably put some basic sheets in there eventually of like how to manage your orders. Yeah, like really, um, but yeah. We can, super basic we stuff like that. that you guys, just resources. Um, and essentially you guys can just download or access these sheets and make a copy on your own. It'll be in the Discord, so guys just join that and I'll, I'll have one of the guys post that up tonight. Patrick, is that one of the OG? Oh yeah, I remember Patrick. Patrick, man. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's that one. So that's 60 Andrew, up, bucks. All right, now let's go to the next one that we have that so, we found. So 49 dollars I'm just gonna put 50. 50 and 71, 71. Uh, Chaz said, 49, make sure that that item, okay, so Kevin, this is a big tip Chaz just gave you. Make sure the item on Amazon doesn't have multiple qualities, quantities oh, yeah. compared yeah. to the one that you guys, you found on Target. So oh, if Target, the quantity is, really is one item, um, and the, uh, and on Amazon, it's a it's a four quantity or something. You still make money. Yeah, uh, I think. And, uh, and yeah, this other item was seven bucks. We just found guys. Yeah. Uh, Solid ten percent margin on this item. Like I said, you know. So that's already sixty dollars. That's seven dollars. That's like sixty-seven bucks. And then was there another one? I think I this one. Oh, this is the one we weren't sure. Or I think. Uh, oh yeah, I did do it actually. It was a dollar one, right? Minus a dollar. Like, it was no, I, no, because I think I deleted that one. And seventy-one ninety-nine. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, just, no, yes, three, almost three bucks. Okay, yeah. so oh, literally, guys. Time. So if you took all these, if if you had one forty-five minute session of product research and you were doing this, and you found these three products, literally seventy dollars is right there at like at your fingertips. That's if they sell one time, though. That's if they, sell, if they one sell one time. time. So I'm gonna I, I, I'm gonna end this at this. We've been on we've been live for exactly an hour, right? Yeah, about an hour. Yeah. So. Okay, so look, so so if these items all sell one time, like Chris said, it's seventy bucks. The thing about building an online e-commerce store on Amazon or eBay or any of these platforms is the work you did in the past will pay you for the future. So you guys found these three items in one hour with us. Now let's say you find your own items in the next hour. And you list those items tonight. And they sell this week and you make 70 bucks. But then next week they sell again. You've now made $140 from the one hour of product research. But let's say they sell 10 more times next month. Now you've made 700 plus 140 from that one hour of work. Do you guys see how this compounds? So it's not like you guys are gonna build a seven, six figure business overnight, but the hours you put in in this business model pay you over time. So when you guys go work a job and you guys get paid $16 for that hour, that hour never pays you again. But e-commerce, the second you get good at putting time and effort into that one hour and you get skillful at this business model, that hour can pay you dividends for the next few years. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to say that, you know, the products you search for today are going to pay you five years from now because um, it takes upkeep, it takes things, but it'll definitely compound and, and help you guys out. So if you guys have any final questions, put it in. So what do you all have to say about inventory changes? Chris was speaking on that and stop. Yeah. So what it comes down to is just either you're going to track the inventory yourself or you're going to use a software to do it for you or you're going to have an employee do it for you. So. Whatever organizational method works we're for you. We're not going to show you any of those. Yeah, things. yeah. So it's whatever organizational method you feel comfortable with. As long as your bookkeeping is solid, you know what something costs, what you're paying for it, mm -hmm. uh, and any fees associated. Someone just do just the basic said, math. Someone else just said, this is so fucking easy. Just found an ideal product for quarter, quarter four, $15 profit, um, 415K BSR. Oh, that's great. Like, literally, it's just so easy. Like, you guys saw this. You know, we guys picked products that you guys chose. You yeah, know, yeah. So we literally went off the list. Literally. And we opened up our first product. Italy has 24% taxes. I have to sell items for gold. Just sell in the United States, dude. Yeah, dude. There, I mean, honestly, there was enough info in there for somebody to easily make yeah. 500 bucks. I want to sure. show them one thing real quick. So what I'll you're going to do... LLC work. If this you're... is the wrong information for you to be <laughs> consuming right now. Worry about finding the items before you are worry about spending a thousand bucks to open an LLC. But right here, what's going to happen is when I share this link with you guys later in the Discord group, it's not going to allow you to edit this actual sheet for this calculator. You're going to hit file and then you're just going to click make a copy right here where it says make a copy. That's all you're going to do. You can call it whatever you want. Hit OK. And now this is a copy you can edit. Now, once again, it says just adjust the yellow cell, so only adjust these, and everything else will get calculated for you. So if you don't do that, and then you know you'll screw it up. So just so you guys know, if you want to adjust the tax, you can, but just set it to what you want it to be. 
Yeah, we have seven as kind of like the national average. It could be like anywhere from six to nine, depending on the state. But seven is kind of, you know, like that sweet spot we like to do. Yeah, it's it's just standard, basically. Yeah. But again, it's your calculator. It's your business. It's your, your numbers. If you want to adjust it how you want, you have the option to do that. Just don't Peace out, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining. All right. Cool. Yeah, guys. See you guys next time. Hope to see you next time.